What is up, my learners? My name is Sebastian Sierra, and welcome to another episode of Sierra Reviews. And today we're reviewing the latest movie in the MCU, of course, Chang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. For this review, I'm going to spoil the hell out of this movie, but not necessarily going from point A to C, because then we'll be here longer than the movie itself. But I will enter the biggest details from beginning to end, from what I like, what I didn't like, post-credit juiciness, and all that stuff. So you've been warned. So I wasn't really excited for this movie. I was eager and curious to see it and see a different protagonist as a representation, but it didn't look like anything that would stand out. From what I saw, the posters didn't help either. I thought this movie would be kind of generic and kind of be on par with the lowest MCU films. So my expectations were very low, but going to the theater, I was getting pretty excited. Like right off the bat, I loved how this movie began. It wasn't a big bombastic beginning, which is something wrong with that. But instead it's a quieter character focused intro specifically focused on Wen Shu and how it connects to Chang Chi. Spoiler alert, he's a daddy. What a twist! Now, I don't know if it's an actual story detail from the comic books, but all I know is I love that detail because it makes it more personal. I was nervous that detail would come off as cheesy and generic, but it worked out marvelously. No pun intended, goddammit. The fight that he had with his mother was kind of cheesy at first. Maybe nervous how the fights would look like for the rest of the film? Because it's like they were imitating cliches from like fantastical martial arts films. But looking back on it, it seems beautiful in building their relationship. The thing is, I was always trepidatious about his real intentions. But looking back on it after the rest of the movie, knowing what happens, it was, it was sweet. Chang Chi himself is amazing. He's charming, kind, sweet, he's funny, and he has personality from what I thought originally would be a serious one-note protagonist. He's more than a badass, he's a well-rounded character with a dark and tragic past. In my the movie, I'm excited to see him in other films like The Avengers. I'm excited to see him in other appearances. I'm just, I'm, I'm really eager to see him more. Also, him liking character just makes him more relatable and more likable. Seeing his backstory to seeing how he starts at the beginning of the movie where he's just a ballet guy, just makes him, like, it just sold me on his characters. Made me very relatable on who he is. And Katie? I loved her too! I was holding myself back and seeing how Aquafina will work in this movie. Nervous that she would be annoying. But her character is so welcomed here. She's funny, she's sweet, she's supportive, but she's also a well-rounded character with feelings and emotions and not just a comedic character. She's an actual person. And she's not wasted and useless throughout the movie. She actually helps out throughout the whole movie. And she's not just being there, she's being funny. Hell, she even gives a big help at the end of the movie that gives Chang Shi the final blow to the Soul Eater. I love her so much. The relationship between them by the end is interesting. Already telling us that they could be a couple? At first I didn't see because I thought they would be much better as just friends, with them being a couple just coming off as unnatural and forced. But by the end, maybe. I can see that happening. And the fight of the bus is amazing. One of the best action set pieces of the movie and of the MCU. I think the film itself is one of the best set pieces of the entire MCU. It calmed my fears by the action of the movie. I mean, although there are some instances of floatiness, the action is fast paced with moments of slowing down and it's done in such a pristine way that you can see everything that's going on and nothing is shaking on the camera. The stunts are spectacular with Simu Liu kind of seeing like he's doing almost every stunt. Either that or they hunt the stuntman very well in the movie because I could even notice if there was a stuntman or not. But it seems that he does almost all of them. The way the camera follows throughout the set piece and throughout the rest of the action of the movie is done incredibly well. It could have been repetitive, but it worked out so well. The bus thing was so much fun. It didn't come in too late or too early in the movie. It just came out at the perfect time. It also came off as another surprise that it shows already that Chang Chi can fight like a goddamn super warrior. And also that he knows his origins about his family and everything is a plus because it takes away the whole for time explore his origins type of first movie. I just love that he already knows his origins, but not to spend any time trying to explore that stuff, he already knows that we can move on. Which is nothing wrong with movies that do that, but it's refreshing this time around, and I loved it. Mini Sister Sha Ling and everything around that, the scene where they went to, it was great. Everything around it was great. Even the action set piece was awesome. Seeing what she's doing now and her story was very good. My only issue was, I mean, she's a great character, but oftentimes it felt like she was just there and didn't develop her more. She almost felt inexistent, it just it was irritating sometimes. At the end, they did a lot of good and didn't leave her in a corner, but sometimes it felt like they left her behind in the mall. But Manger Chan, if that's how you pronounce her name, I'm sorry if I completely butchered that. She was also great in the movie. Abomination fighting Wong in an underground ring. That's cool as hell. But apparently it's a train abomination? For what exactly? Is he becoming an Avenger? I, 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 that's what I understood, like he was getting trained by Wong. Interesting. 
when she was also a fantastic character. At first, the movie was selling me the idea that probably he was going to be a one-note villain if he was only just seeking power, with some maybe bits fleshed out. But no, although he was not a good guy from the beginning, it seems that he changed over time, but then fell back for obvious reasons. Part of what I loved about him is that the whole movie made me guess about what his real intentions were. I couldn't figure him out. Like, is he good? Is he bad? Is he tricking Chang Chi and his sister? Like, I could never fully trust him. Even after he died, I said quote unquote, because I don't know. I still can't even trust him. I'm like, I, I don't know about this guy. But it seems that he was a good guy in this movie, but he was being tricked into doing something that could come off as catastrophic. And his relationship with Chang Chi was great and just complex. And some dark shit was done with Chang Chi, but apparently for some good intentions, you can say it's good. Because you know, it's done to kill the man who killed his mother. When she also apparently left Shao Ling in the wayside, like, just like the movie kinda. Like overall, when she isn't a, that good of a man, but he isn't evil either. He's in a gray area, but he's actually trying to be good, but kinda doesn't give a fuck a lot of times. And this gray area makes him a compelling villain. Trevor Slattery's in this movie? Like, I didn't expect to see him in the movie. I thought they were gonna reference him and maybe an appearance by the end, like a post credit scene. Because they have to mention, I mean, come on, like, big part of Iron Man 3, and especially his one shot, has to do with Mandarin, so they have to mention him. Or at least what happened in Iron Man 3. But even going further, is they making a secondary character throughout the whole movie? Fucking awesome. But it was really handled by having him throughout the journey but not make him take the whole movie away from Chong Chi, which that's what I was kind of nervous about when he was there for a little bit. I'm glad that wasn't the case because they brought him in appropriate times to keep it funny, keep it light, but he didn't take off anything with the movie. It wasn't like annoying. He was just there when it was appropriate. But he's really funny with him getting a lot of laughs. It's also kind and sweet. I, I just love him. And Ben Kingsley, man, he was great in this movie. He was fantastic. He was surprisingly funny. I didn't expect him to be this good at comedy. Also, I guess he's in Tao Lao now. That's where he is right now, the MCU. Speaking of which, the second or third act in Tao Lao is great. I love seeing the imaginative creatures. Zhang Nan was great and beautifully played by Michelle Yeoh. Even the smaller characters, like the old warrior guy, was fantastic. And seeing Kitty getting trained and want to contribute just furthers the idea that she's not just a one-note funny one. The third act is really good with some great action and some great resolutions, like the idea of Ten Rings joining forces to stop the Soul Eater. Also, the machete guy, he had an accent at the beginning of the movie, and throughout the movie, that accent kept dropping and dropping until the end of the movie. He had no accent anymore. I, I liked him, though. He was a good character. I liked him. The sad ending with Wen Chu is sad, and Chang Chi achieving his full potential is awesome. Like, everything here was great. This movie doesn't have any bad characters at all. Like, no one is annoying, poorly written, wasted aside from kind of chawling in parts, and masterfully acted. The characters are enriching, the story was done so well, the action is phenomenal. The movie's just beautiful with its score, its tone, and showing ancient culture representation in the forefront without being unnatural and feeling kind of forced. Hell, like many times it didn't feel like I was watching a Marvel movie, and it was instead it was like a movie that, that came from Asia. It wasn't bogged down with MCU shit with characters and references, but with the references and characters that were there were done effectively. Story over references. This movie gets a 9.5 out of 10 for me, like almost a 10, because Charlene was handled bad sometimes, and also because they said that that maze opens once a year, but throughout the movie we kind of like. I guess I deduced they can open up every day. It was just unclear, it was confusing. It, it wasn't really well thought out, in, in my opinion. It was, it was just inconsistent, but the movie is just just astoundingly great. I mean, this is the best phase four movie so far. I mean, it doesn't really have a lot of competition right now, but it's one of the best, and I will say one of the best MCU movies ever, right? It was just, it was just done so well. and every area like i haven't felt this great in a film and in a theater in a long time great stuff and also this movie is just refreshing and, and everything so it's just which is a marvelous experience that no pun intended god damn it post credit scene talk real quick the first post credit scene is one of the best ones in the mcu i mean wow with adding chong chi and kelly straight into the world of the mcu what happened to wait for another movie or another appearance is awesome like we're already here like they're there they're thrust into this world this is what it is i mean the build-up to what's gonna happen in the future is great the addition of having bruce and carol there which i actually love seeing carol there i was excited to see her which that's new and the mystery of the rings you know like what is that like the beacon to where who's calling them hmm 
I mean, what are your theories on that? I'm curious to see, like, what are your theories on that? Because I, could it be, you know, Wenshu? I, I don't know. Is he a tease to Khan the Conqueror? I don't think so, but I'm curious to see what it is. And the second scene was cool to see, you know, with the Ten Rings being a new organization. But I have no idea what they mean with them coming back. Is this going to be a spinoff? Is it a sequel? Like, what is it? If it's a spinoff show, then I don't know how that will work. But I'm curious to see what it is. But it's weird that it says, like, the Ten Rings will return, but there's no Chong Chi return. Nowhere to be found. But yeah, man, I really love this movie. I really had a great time. It's one of the best experiences I've had in theater and one of the best movies I've seen throughout this entire year. It was fantastic all around. I love this movie. I can't wait to see more of Chang Chi, all these characters, a lot of this world. Cannot wait. So that is my review for Chang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. What did you think of the movie? Did you like the movie? Did you not like the movie? Who did you not like? Who did you love in this movie? Favorite parts and all that stuff. So please let me know what you think and let's talk about the movie. And if you like my review, please get a like, share, and subscribe for more reviews or different other wide variety kind of because the channel is diverse like that. So whatever you like is probably here or I'm going to do it. So thank you guys again for the support you guys giving me. I love you guys. It's, it's fantastic. So thank you. My name is Atien Sierra. You see it aquí. I love no shit.